Facebook Live through Zoom. This is exciting. Great feature and technology is continuing to connect us so much right now during this pandemic. It is, it's great. It is. Okay, we're live now. So welcome everybody. Um, today I have with me Jenny Chadwick with uh, the University of Missouri. And Jenny is going to talk a little bit about tobacco cessation on college campuses. So thanks for being with me today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I want to give you just a bigger picture of what our initiative is working on. So we are the Missouri Eliminate Tobacco Use Initiative. Um, we are a replication site of MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas started a program, an initiative about five years ago. And so Texas was the first state to, to have this initiative going. And now we are actually the fourth state, so the fourth replication site for the Eliminate Tobacco Use Initiative. And for anybody who wants to find us, they can just go to eliminatetobaccouse.org and I'll make sure to put that um, link in the chat box. I don't know if that's helpful for you. Um, but that is where the initiative website exists and in just a big picture of like what is the initiative so we are fortunate that the Missouri Foundation for Health has funded a three year um, project for the University of Missouri so that we can work on tobacco prevention cessation and policy throughout all of the campuses in the state of Missouri. And we have 76 colleges throughout the state. So, I, I mean, I think sometimes we know of the, the bigger ones that we recognize, but as far as our two and four year um, colleges, our tech schools, um, we really have quite a few in, in, in many areas, um, both rural and urban um, communities. And so we look at, well, what are current policies to prevent tobacco use or to help to treat with tobacco use on our college campuses? So many of us have heard of smoke-free policies um, mm -hmm. that prevent smoking indoors. And, and we looked at, you know, what are our current college campuses across the state doing as far as tobacco use policies? And, um, you know, we did an analysis to, to see, like, where are we to start with? And you know, when we think of a smoke-free policy, we want to make sure that there's no tobacco use both indoors in buildings and on the college campuses. Um, and then we also work on tobacco cessation, as you mentioned. So one of the most important things right now, um, especially with the prevalence and invasiveness of e-cigarettes is that we know that many of our college students right now are starting college using tobacco products. So unfortunately, you know, looking at Missouri's rates and in, 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 in co on college campuses, about one in five students um, is currently using tobacco products, right? Um, and, and a huge percentage of those are using e-cigarettes or dual using, meaning they're using more than one tobacco product. So they might be using e-cigarettes and combustible traditional cigarettes that you would see people smoking. Um, so can I pause you for just one second? Yes. <laughs> when, when we see kids initiate with the vaping, the e-cigarettes, those kinds, do they typically then go into becoming a traditional cigarette smoker? Yeah, so, you know, e-cigarettes are very controversial and that some people still feel that they can help you quit smoking, right? And so, and I think that the science is pretty clear that there is some, there's some benefit to those who are are smoking cigarettes to transition on to e-cigarettes. But unfortunately, what we know based on research is that for every one adult who is using traditional cigarettes, we have 80 kids becoming addicted to nicotine through e-cigarettes. So it is more of an on-ramp than an off-ramp um, for, for getting kids addicted, right? This is the whole new way the industry is con connecting to our kids. And so once they start using, um, and I don't have the stats just right off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's over 25% that will tradition to combustible cigarettes. And, and the reason for that is, is that nothing gets nicotine into the bloodstream faster than that traditional cigarette. And once you're addicted to nicotine, you want, you're craving it, right? And so unfortunately, people transition over onto cigarettes more than they transition off. And so 
I think that we all know now, you know, five years ago, it would be hard to say, but we all know now that e-cigarettes are unfortunately something that's getting kids addicted and then they are using combustible or traditional cigarettes. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I was just curious about that question. So tell us a little bit more about your initiatives. Yeah, absolutely. So what we do is we bring college campuses together and healthcare systems with an annual summit. So um, we have that summit on April the 14th and 15th and registration will launch next week. And anybody in the state of Missouri who wants to participate in the summit registration is free. So through the grant, Missouri Foundation for Health covers all registration costs for anybody living within the state of Missouri. So anybody on any of our college campuses can, can attend our annual summit, and it is virtual this year. Um, we have some great speakers, so it's a two-day summit. Um, Brian King, who is um, with the CDC's Tobacco Control and probably one of the best speakers that I have heard on, in tobacco control, will be one of our keynote speakers this year. And you know, day Two, so the two day summit, we're really going to hear from folks on the ground in our state that are working on cessation um, on college campuses and our students who are seeing tobacco use um, within our schools. You know, unfortunately, one of the at risk populations that we've identified um, based on our partners in prevention data and partners in prevention is is an organization within the state that we partner with and they collect data on 23 college campuses across the state. But if you look into that data, we see that our Greek population is actually at the great, one of the greatest risks of using tobacco products. Almost 50% of those students living in Greek housing are using e-cigarettes on MU's <laughs> campus and on campuses across um, the state, about 40% of of students living in Greek housing are using. So we know that that is a demographic, especially for e-cigarettes, that is very vulnerable. And so we have launched a project to start reaching out to Greek houses to address their tobacco policy. So not only are we looking at campus policies, but we're also looking at Greek housing policies. So what we know is the way that we've been penalizing youth for becoming addicted, for falling prey, is that we've been maybe fining them or um, putting a, a, a penalty on them. And we've lacked real treatment for these students. And so we want to make sure that we have a robust treatment system to help kids who are addicted. So MU Healthcare is offering free Zoom um, group classes that are offered to anybody in the state um, if they're interested in doing cessation classes. And I can make sure that um, that you guys have that information that you can post on your social media after we get done with our talk. Yeah, yeah so that's great. Yeah, really looking at the policy aspect, making sure we have comprehensive policy, looking at the cessation aspects, making sure we provide um, services and resources, and then um, also looking at prevention, like what are we doing to help inform and educate? And, you know, I, I really appreciate this opportunity to come on your Facebook Live to talk about the importance and the understanding. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say a comprehensive approach for policy cessation and prevention. I mean, that was my next thing I was going to say. So what are some of the prevention efforts that you guys do on college campuses? Yeah, so we have launched what's called an ambassador program and the University of Missouri is our pilot, but we actually offer grants to other institutions around the state who are interested in replicating that ambassador program where we have students that go out and right now they're, they're on campus two hours a day um, and they're circulating the campus identifying if there's any policy violators. And instead of saying, you're not supposed to do that, we're actually doing a cessation intervention in the moment. So we're providing nicotine replacement therapy to anybody who is um, using tobacco products and we're, we're providing them with the resources on cessation. And we are working on rolling that out to other college campuses across the state. That's very, very exciting. And of course, I'm very proud that our university is leading this charge, of course. So that is fabulous news. Well, is before we wrap up, and like Jenny said, she'll get me the information and we'll drop it into uh, the comments and share it on social media. So um, you guys can get all of the information that she's talked about today. But is there any final thing that you want our viewers to know? I have a feeling maybe this won't be our first 
Facebook Live. We might have to do another one. <laughs> I would look forward to that. You know, I think the biggest thing is you don't need to be on a college campus to want to get involved in the Eliminate Tobacco Use Initiative for Missouri. Um, College campuses impact many of us, but you know we're looking at prevention, cessation, and policy within our communities. So I would say the biggest thing is join us for our April 14th and 15th summit, um, and you know we look forward to providing more information and having a phenomenal list of speakers um, for that event. So I just put it in the chat box for you if you want to post it to your Facebook page. That's great. And I'm sure that we'll have people flooding to it because I know that a lot of our coalitions around the state and our other groups work on tobacco cessation all the time and tobacco prevention. So this is going to be very valuable. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. And thank you for all of the good information. And um, I look forward to talking with you again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. Have a good one.